I just realized the most craziest thing in the world. It's so crazy, I had to go put on my outer space pajamas. See? It's outer space. What I realized was, well, I wanted to see what my keyboard would look out look like instead of lambda mode. I scooted that key over for this dir dir two mode that I now have this laid out as. So it looks like this. Maybe not as elegant as having them all kind of even, but guess what it looks like. Guess what? It's exactly like Heinz Bullen's original keyboard he built in 72. And what a totally whacked out roundabout way I came up with the same exact thing. <laughs> oh, can't wait to talk to him again. And uh, ask him, because I asked him which mode he had based his keyboard on and he couldn't remember, but he had used you know, he developed Dir 1, Dir 2, Mol 1, Mol 2, meaning two versions of major and minor. This this is most definitely Dir 2. Go figure. My brain's gonna explode. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna try to get through the rest of these chords before I fall asleep because now I'm all in jammy mode. Okay, finally we're back to the semi-fun part playing chords. So here's this chart. Just for review, I'll play all these crazy chords. And I'm going to make a more official version of this and put it on the website, which is zeaspace.com slash Elaine, all lowercase, slash capital B, capital P. So just for review, remember we've got our major chord and another version of it. Symmetrical to this we have the minor chord. Another not so good version of it. Back to the major chord. We can add a six here or here. I think that sounds better. Generally I think wide chords sound better than narrow chords in this tuning. Uh, we can have a seventh here or here. We can modify that by playing minor and then adding a six, which by the way is symmetrical. Uh, looks kind of the same except upside down and flipped. Six minor and a dominant seventh. Of inverted triangles and kind of inverted trapezoids, um, diamonds, good shapes. I'm really liking this a lot because my brain works with shapes. Um, more excited about kind of improvising on on this because of all the visual shapes. I don't have to think so much about technicalities about theory. Believe it or not, <clears throat> the more theory I've learned all my life, music theory I've had since first grade all through college, grad school, uh, the more I learn, the more I would ignore it when I'm writing. I do have another side to my brain that's kind of scientific, technical, but somehow there's a disconnect. When I'm writing music, I don't think about any of this stuff I'm talking to you about. All this is going to go right out the window. Um, although I will develop habits playing certain chords and learn technique so that my, my hands know it, but my brain won't be knowing it when I'm writing. Um, but what I was going to say is this keyboard is more linear, um, more like reading a paragraph as opposed to looking at a drawn out diagram. This to me is more of the diagram part of my brain. It works better. Um, did that make any sense? Okay, so let's continue with this. Um, there is a kind of 
four chord. I'm sorry, that seems to be a sharp four chord. A little bit flatter than a sharp four. set up by playing minor kind of for a dramatic sci-fi sound so there I've played a bunch of bunch of different chords that are kind of you, you can kind of relate them to 12 tone tuning sounding stuff even though, miraculously, this has nothing to do with the 12 tone tuning. The other thing I did was try to develop a couple different ways to resolve down a fit. I'm making quotes. <laughs> you can't see. So here we go. Here's this triangle again. One chord. And you can just, you know, how the tritive sounds like an octave and a fifth. So the five chord, you could just jump way up here. But that sounds funny because you need kind of leading tones. Remember all about leading tones? So here's a one chord, five chord. So you're not going to just want to resolve like this. Because this note, you kind of want that to sound like da 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 da. You need it to lead somewhere, not just jump in giant leaps. That's something that you learn if you take traditional harmony class. You learn all about you, uh, notes that are shared in chords are always good to have. Notice this stays the same. But the other notes should go to kind of a, a close by note to resolve instead of jumping all the way down here. I want to point one more thing out. There is an octave-like interval that I think is close enough to actually use. I would use it, and I have used it. Remember this row of um, shrunken octaves? See, that's definitely wrong. It's too sharp. Pretty close. Too flat. You go up two tritos, and then the one above it. I think that should be allowed, and I want to know how close that, how in tune that really is. So again, here we go. Let's try to resolve this. Let's see how much this bends our ears. Resolving to minor, that's why that sounds funny. Here we go, ready? This is it. <laughs> that's major. drive to New Mexico tomorrow to celebrate my dad's birthday and then drive back and immediately fly to Boston and give a presentation at Berkeley. So before I go, I just want to read uh, an email from Heinz Bolin. This is totally amazing. He, uh, well, I'll just read it. This is from March 3rd, just the other day. Hello Elaine, by pure accident, I came across that video you put up on YouTube. I'm smitten. This is really a remarkable example of a demo and I love your song. I would like to have a copy. I'll try to download it, but my knowledge in this sector is limited. I'll let you know. 
I think your idea of developing a hexagon keyboard for BP is just great. And then he goes on to talk about these two Bolin Pierce scale clarinets um, this guy Stephen Fox developed. And that's also crazy, 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 crazy. Because I just emailed that guy Stephen Fox just the other day. He hasn't written me back. Just emailed him asking if I could borrow one of his BP clarinets see if my mom can play it, because my mom plays clarinet. She has perfect pitch, so it might bend your ears off, but I think she could do it. <sighs> and then he says, blah, 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 says some stuff. And then he says, have a great time, and give my sincere regards to Richard Boulanger once you arrive in Boston. Heinz. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll probably add some more stuff uh, after this with more diagrams and show you the website and stuff, but for now, good night.